Yeah, well, obviously it was, you know, tail of two halves, played really good in the first half. Uh, you know, actually should have went in ahead at halftime, six or, you know, three points at least. You know, we left points out there. We got the ball down in field goal range and we turned it over when we had had a chance to have points and then we missed a field goal. You know, they missed one too. So uh, should have at least been, been up three times at half. And then uh, in the second half, you know, we just didn't play as well as we did in the first. And the big thing was turning the ball over. You know, you, you end up... Uh, a game with uh, five turnovers and only get one from them. And it's not going to be good. Doesn't matter who you play. And, you know, you play a top 10 team. It's, it's uh, really going to get ugly. And, you know, that's what happened in the end. Coach, uh, in the first 25 minutes of the game, uh, you guys had 80% of the possession, uh, forced a couple three and outs against Cincinnati. They looked really uncomfortable. You guys looked extremely comfortable. What was the game plan offensively? Uh, just coming in against Cincinnati, uh, offensively. Yeah, yeah. You know, we wanted to wanted to run the ball, but you know, we threw the ball probably more than normal. You know, uh, early on, we just felt like uh, you know that's where we had a chance to to move the ball, and our kids were catching the ball well. Preston was throwing the ball well, and you know, uh, you know that that helped us. And you know, we were running. And as you say, the defense was getting off the field. You know, with three and outs, giving the ball back to the offense. Time of possession was in our favor, and that was really you know, uh, an issue in the second half, you know, we couldn't get off the field defensively and, uh, you know, our, uh, offensively we were turning the ball over and our defense was getting tired. Coach, this is, I hate to ask this question because I know he's been so good for you guys, but this is two weeks in a row where maybe Aaron Baum has had some struggles. The distance is there, uh, but the accuracy maybe isn't there. As a coach and as a coaching staff, how do you talk to a specialist and say, hey, Here's how we get it together. What's the step there? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, there's a lot into a field goal. You know, it's it's snap, hold, kick. So a lot of times, people want to, you know, they they kind of got the same job I do. You know, if something goes wrong, it's it's me. You know, <laughs> and that's uh, what I signed up for. And and uh, you know, my my mentor Jim Grove used to always say, "You're the head coach. You're responsible for everything short of world hunger." And uh, you know, it's kind of the same with the, with the kickers. You know, you the, the kick goes bad, and and uh, automatically everybody's you know pointing the finger at him. But there's a there's a lot to a kick and we need to watch the film to find out, you know, was it the snap, was it the hold or, you know, was it the kick or was it the protection? You know, there's a, there's a lot that goes into it. So, uh, you know, last week it wasn't all Aaron, you know, there, there were other issues with the operation, you know, we'll have to watch this film to, to figure out, you know, if that's the case again or not. Coach, it's your first FBS game uh, as head coach of the, of the racers. Do you think the pressure kind of got to the guys a little bit here, or was it just little mistakes here and there adding up? No, I don't think it had anything to do with pressure. I think if if it was a pressure thing, you'd have saw it in the first half. You know, you you would have saw you know guys not rise up, not make the plays that they can make, that they're physically, athletically. Uh, able to make, you know, it's, uh, you know, we, we definitely got tired, you know, in the second half, uh, you know, as an FBS team, you're, you're a little bit deeper. And I think our, you know, kids got tired, especially in the secondary, you know, we had several, several guys that were cramping and I don't think we're out of shape. You know, I think, I think we're in good shape. Coach Clay and, and Fulton, you know, do a great job of, uh, you know, keeping the, keeping the load where it needs to be to be productive in a game. So, uh, and I don't think it was a hydration issue either. I think those kids did a good job hydrating. So I just think it's a matter of, uh, you know, we just wore down a little bit. Uh, and the fact that we weren't, you know, the, the second half was totally different from the first half. First half, we were moving the ball. We possessed the ball. The defense, you know, was going out fresh, you know, having a three and out. And then it turned into defense couldn't get a stop. They drive. And then we turned the ball over. They got to go back out again. So, you know, it just became a, a deal where, you know, we got wore down and you give a good team too many chances, that's not a good formula. How do you and your staff analyze the turnovers? I know Preston's first interception that was maybe a juiced throw where he was trying to make a play over the middle of the field. A couple of interceptions even were just tough throws along the sideline. But I know as a coaching staff, there's got to be an analysis process uh, on how turnovers rank as far as if, you know, was it your fault or someone else? How do you guys work through that? Yeah, and, and that's what we do. You know, we watch the film and it's and it's really and, and our kids are, you know, pretty mature, do a good job. You know, they realize that, you know, we're, we're looking for improvement and correction. You know, we're, we're not looking for blame. We're not looking to say, hey, it's your fault. and We're blaming you. We're looking to say, hey, 
you know, th this is where it broke down and we got to get better. And, you know, throwing a football, you know, again, it's, it's a little bit like the, you know, the kicking thing, you know, could it, could have been the protection, could have been the route, you know, not run right, could have been, they made a really good play. You know, we had a, had a good play call, everybody, everybody did their job and, you know, they got, they got good players too. And sometimes guy just makes a good play. So, you know, we'll take all that into consideration. It could be timing, you know, maybe we didn't throw it on time, maybe because of the pressure, uh, you know, it wasn't a sack or it wasn't what somebody would have, you know, perceived in the fans or in the stands as saying, hey, he got pressured there, but maybe it, it made him throw the ball not on time uh, or throw the ball off his back foot, you know, those type of things. So, so we'll look at it and, uh, you know, we'll try to get it corrected and, and improve. Coach, my final question, uh, and if it needs to be redirected elsewhere, I understand, but uh... I know it's tough to talk about money sometimes, but clearly an FBS opponent uh, comes with a, a lucrative paycheck. ESPN's reported that it's a three hundred ninety thousand uh, dollar pay uh, for this game. Uh, what does that do for the Murray State for program, and how does that help uh, moving forward? Knowing that you now have that kind of in the advance. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any idea how much you know they paid us, and. Uh... That, that is above my pay grade. That's that's our athletic director, Kevin Saul. You know, he works all that out. I know, you know, that uh, budget wise, you know, there are a lot of people had to do a lot of work to try to, you know, get us to where we're at right now, not having those guarantee games last year, you know, because of COVID. So uh, that is a big issue, was a big issue, is a big issue. And, and you know, we're playing, you know, catch up, obviously trying to trying to use the, the guarantee, but that's, you know, that's our athletic director, Kevin Saul. And then, you know, he uses that money, you know, at his discretion. He, he don't just have football. You know, he's got a lot of sports that, that he's got to run. And so when, when we're uh, fortunate to be able to play those guarantee games and, and get that money, then, then Mr. Saul is going to, you know, look at the overall, all the programs and, and see where to put that money wisely to make, you know, help everybody be successful. Coach, I've got one final question for you. Um, you have one more big matchup next week, and then conference starts after that. What do the next few weeks look like for the team? Well, you know, I mean, it's one game at a time, uh, you know, so that's all our concern. That, you know, next next week's going to be very similar to this week from a standpoint of, uh, you know, wh when we travel, how we practice on Friday, you know, what the beginning of the week, you know, looks like because we're into a normal, you know, game routine. Uh, it's a little further. We're playing a little later, uh, but, but it'll be very similar, you know, to, to the preparation for this week. Uh, and then we're open. So, you know, a lot of that's going to be determined on, you know, how we look physically, you know, as far as injuries and all that coming out of Bowling Green of, of how that next week looks. And then we get into, you know, we get into conference play. It's a little misleading uh, because, uh, you know, we, we've got Eastern Illinois after that and, and they are in our conference. But, you know, that, that game, because of our uh, losing Jacksonville, you know, State and, and losing Eastern Kentucky, uh, we're playing two game, two teams twice, and and uh, you know this first time that we play in Eastern Illinois is actually considered a non-conference game. It's a little misleading that you know we're playing Eastern Illinois, but we're not really actually getting into conference play.